to my talk. I'm really grateful to be here. I'm super happy and excited to be talking about this subject. Um, so today we're going to talk about how engineers with collaborative and growth mindset are winning. And I'll go into the different types of mindsets later, but in general, a mindset is a group of attitudes and beliefs that a person has that may govern how they see themselves or see other people and even the entire world. Um, especially at work, our mindset may affect the types of projects that we take on, um, the challenges that we might try, um, and how we interact with our coworkers. Um, and then when I say winning here, I mean delivering the best product to the customer or client or teammate as fast as possible. For those of us who are test engineers, that means writing the best tests, creating the best test framework so that releases are easier and um, software development can go fast. All right. So hi, I'm Meredith Bain. I'm a software engineer. I currently own my own company. It's called Moderni Tech. I'm currently living in Portland, Oregon in the US. Um, and here's my contact information, my email, and then my Twitter and Instagram handle are both the same thing, Moderni Tech. Um, I'll go ahead and put the contact information up again at the end of the talk, or you can come up and talk to me if you're interested in connecting. So just a little bit about my experience. I've been working in the tech industry for eight years, and the majority of that experience was as a test automation engineer. I've worked on some large companies and some really small companies and a variety of different teams, sometimes really, really small teams where it was a one-to-one -one ratio QE to dev, for example, and some really large teams where there was 10 devs and I was the only QE responsible for writing tests. So I've seen a lot of different things and um, a lot of interacted with a lot of different people with different mindsets and I myself have grown from a fixed mindset to trying to work on a growth and collaborative mindset. Um, I've worked at places where the release process was almost fully automated, like the tests ran, there was a CI CD pipeline and everything went pretty well. The regression testing cycle was really short, mostly smoke tests, that kind of thing. And then on the flip side, I've also worked at places where the regression testing cycle was two weeks long, mostly manual. It was almost impossible to add new things to the test automation framework and almost actually discouraged. So I've um, noticed some patterns in my experiences and definitely strong correlations between mindsets and how the software is delivered. So here are the definitions of the mindsets. A fixed mindset, the belief that qualities are fixed, talent alone leads to success. So we are born with a certain amount of talent and a certain amount of intelligence, and that doesn't change. The growth mindset, um, people with growth mindset believe that learning and intelligence grow with practice. And then the collaborative mindset is the people who are willing to learn from others, who are team players, and um, it kind of goes underneath like an umbrella of the growth mindset. So I may use the terms interchangeably, um, but collaborative mindset is a growth mindset concept. <clears throat> the idea of fixed versus growth mindset was set forth by Carol S. Dweck at Stanford. And um, I have her book up here, which has a lot more information about um, all of the research that she did on it. Um, and if you're interested in it, come up and talk to me. You can take a picture. I'll also post a link to it at the end of the talk. Uh, it's pretty academic, but she has a ton of videos on YouTube. She's done tech talks, so if you really want to do the Cliff Notes version, I recommend getting on YouTube and researching her. She and her team did a lot of research with children, so mindsets can be ingrained in us at a very young age. All right, so this is my favorite quote from her book, the passion for stretching yourself and sticking to it, even or especially when it's not going well, is the hallmark of the growth mindset. And I think what she is really trying to say here is that um, you know, we learn the most and we grow the most when we do very hard tasks and when we fail fast. 
And that can be really difficult for those of us, just like me, who have fixed mindset, because we always have to prove our talent and intelligence, and it can be very hard to take on new tasks. I think this quote, like, really speaks to me too because um, I relate to it in my journey from being a very afraid, um, scared test engineer to being a more confident test engineer who is willing to try new things, try new frameworks, and learn new languages. It took a lot of work from um, you know, being really afraid of opening up a pull request because I thought everyone was going to comment about how stupid I was and how I didn't know how to write any code, um, which by the way, never happened. And then um, now just seeing code reviews as a way to collaborate. Like everyone, um, people are writing comments on my code because they actually care about the feature that I'm working on and want it to be the best as possible. And I try to bring that into my code reviews as well. Um, so yeah. So how growth mindset works in the tech industry and then in test automation, obviously this is a testing conference. Um, technology moves really quickly, so testing must keep up. And growth mindset nurtures more innovation, higher risk projects, and failure providing insights. Um, so at some jobs where I've started, I've noticed that the test automation framework will sometimes be pretty old, maybe have an older version of Java than the development framework. Um, maybe have a bunch of tests that are commented out. Like maybe the, if I look at the Git history, the last time like one of the classes was updated was 2014 or something like that. And I just find that a little bit frustrating because I believe that test automation is software development and that we can hold ourselves to exactly the same standards. And um, falling behind like that, when I've worked at places that had those really long regression cycles, um, that was exactly what was going on. And then um, as far as innovation and higher risk projects and failure providing insights, um, I learned about this from an article that I read in the Harvard Business Review about Microsoft. Um, so if you work at Microsoft, I would love to chat with you after this. Um, at Microsoft, um, they integrated into their leadership training the idea of growth mindset. And um, they decided that they were going to look at different candidates based on potential talent and that they were going to do high risk projects. And even if they failed, they were going to work really hard on um, understanding the insights from those failures. And I used to never use any Microsoft products 10 years ago. And now I use quite a lot of them. And they're really innovative and awesome. So this seems to be working for them. I'll talk a little bit more about this article in a, another slide. So the format of this is I want to go through some scenarios and then I have a question that I'm hoping that we can all ask ourselves to kind of see where we're at with mindset. And I'll do the same right now on stage. So are we limiting by past experience? Do we believe that we're only good at what we've already mastered? So the collaborative mindset would be a willingness to continually learn. The fixed idea, I like to work best with to testing tools I already know and can use well without any trouble, right? Like I hate making mistakes, so I'm just not even gonna try anything new. Introducing new technology will be too difficult for me. So what would be the result of this? The growth thoughts. I like doing work that challenges me. I believe that I can continue to learn at any age or in any position or any job. Learning new tools is important to me as a test engineer. So this concept reminds me of an experience I had where I worked on a team that had a native um, hybrid application. I think it was using native script. And I was the only QE on the team there, and they wanted me to build a framework using Appium. And I had never built any framework using Appium. It was completely terrified. And I spent so many days just saying, I'm so stupid. Like, I'm never going to fix this bug. I'm never going to get it done. And guess what? I always got it done. It took longer than I expected. But um, so that was kind of like a frustrating experience for me sitting in fixed mindset. 
But now looking back at it, since I did get that done and the framework was delivered um, to the best of my ability, I know that if I stick to a hard task and I continue practicing, that I can really do it. Okay, so next, are we limiting by resisting sharing? Do we avoid collaboration for fear that we will lose our status or value? So the collaboration mindset is looking at what is best for the team or project. So the fixed or individualist thoughts. If I share my knowledge or collaborate on a project, then I may look bad if someone else is better than I am. It's important for me to demonstrate my talent. So Carol Dweck emphasizes a lot in her book about how people who have fixed mindset have to continually prove um, their talent in different situations, their talents and in, in intelligence. The growth and collaborative thoughts. When I share, there are more opportunities to grow and improve. And collaboration will increase team performance. So I also had an experience with this type of scenario where I was working on a project that was cross-platform and one of the projects was written in a different language. I was brand new to the job and so I pinged the primary contributor to ask for instructions on how to add the test to it. And basically this person said, you know, I don't think you should write any tests in here. You don't know the language and um, I'd, I'll write all the tests, it's fine. And he was really busy and didn't write all the tests and we ended up having to do a manual regression cycle. Um, so yeah, I just found that a very frustrating experience and for me, like, I felt very left out of the team and um, I don't know. So for me, I try to think about that experience and in, in my life, like if I'm really good in a particular code base and I know a lot or I wrote a framework and someone's new and they come in and they say, how, how do I do this? Or how does this method work? Can I refactor this? Then I try to think like, okay, this is collaboration, like this is how I grow. So from our code reviews and um, from interacting with each other and iterating on the framework, like everything's gonna be better and this is gonna be best for the team. Okay, so are we limiting through isolation? Do we limit ourselves to the same tasks in order to avoid the frustration of learning? So the collaborative mindset is stepping out of daily work. The fixed thoughts. If I try a different role, I might make a mistake and my talent will be questioned. I should always do strictly testing tasks. I know it's a little subjective, but I'll explain it in a minute. The growth thought. I learn the most when I'm challenged and trying something new. Doing something different is a good way for me to learn. And also a good way for me to understand my teammates and the people I'm working with to try to make this the best project possible. <clears throat> so I've given past talks about um, having cross-functional teams and really understanding like the entire software development life cycle, understanding how designers work, what kind of tools they use, understanding the work of the product owners and what they do, understanding development and then um, my fellow test engineers, what they're working on. Um, and I had an experience where I joined this like actually really cool, super innovative project. It was brand new and I was the only QE and was responsible for like, there were no tests, there was nothing in place. So I had to write the whole thing myself. And in order to get it to work, I had to jump into the development code and I write, had to write a service and I also had to change some of the components so they had selectors I could actually use. And at first that was really scary for me because I didn't have any experience with AngularJS and I hadn't written my own service um, on my own yet, but I went ahead and did it and I was super nervous when I opened my pull request, but everything went fine, right? And I got really good feedback. And I think like what I learned out of this is that if I just try something new and get feedback and I'm not afraid that I may fail or make a mistake, then there will possibly be some positive benefits. And I think it was helpful to my teammates to know that I was willing to step out of my comfort zone and do whatever it took to make the best test automation framework possible. And it takes a load off of their shoulders too so that they don't have to write that service for me. I was able to do it with collaboration.
So are we limiting leadership potential? Do we make leadership decisions only to assert our superiority? And Carol Dweck goes more into specific examples like about big companies that she names and what went wrong with them, companies like Enron and stuff. I won't go into that, I'll keep it at a small scope. So the collaborative mindset way of doing this is creating opportunities for everyone to grow. So fixed thought. As a leader, I must continually assert my superiority. So it's important to avoid risk, failure, and giving team members leadership opportunities. The growth thought is giving more people a chance to be leaders will improve performance across the company. <clears throat> So there are a lot of different ways to be a leader. And um, I think that, um, for example, if I was really good at a certain code base and had worked at, in it a lot, I could take on a leadership role by being available for questions and also um, for feedback and being kind of the pers go-to person to um, kind of lead that project forward. And I think like an environment that um, has collaborative mindset and has a good culture would really encourage that. And I just want to go back to what Microsoft was doing um, because like the article really emphasized how they were giving people more chances to take on leadership roles through things like hackathons, for example, but in other cases like smaller things like I just mentioned. And they definitely noticed that there was talent growth and um, the potential to attract more talent and that innovative and cutting edge products came out of that. Okay, and finally, do we, are we limiting risk to avoid failure? Do we accept failure as a necessary part of moving forward? So this one's really difficult for me because I totally hate making mistakes and I really hate failure. I find it to be humiliating and challenging and I have to do personally a lot of work to let it go. But um, ultimately, there's another way to look at failure. So the collaborative mindset way of thinking about this is we're gaining insights from successes and failures. So the fixed thought is failure is devastating and must be avoided. And I like my work best when I can do it easily without failing. And the growth thought is a failed project or idea is an excellent opportunity to grow. Projects that fail produce crucial insights for future success. So we all are probably going to fail at something at some point in our lives. And it, I just believe it's not a reflection on us as individuals. We're just the engineers. We are not the project. We're the engineers who are hired for our expertise to do the best job we can on the project with the resources that we are given. Um, so gaining insight to me means you know, like if a project failed or a feature failed or I wrote really terrible code and we had to push it to production and then go back and refactor it or something like that, um, I could in a future meeting when we're talking about a new feature or some stuff we want to add to the test automation framework be like, oh, actually, I think I'm going to imp implement it this way because last time when I tried it that way, it totally did not work because of X. So X is the insight that I gained. And I think failing and learning why we failed helps us fine tune our skills so that in the future we have better projects. Um, so you can take some quizzes online if you want to, to check your mindset and where you're at. But I just wrote up some questions that I like to ask myself in each category. Um, so for learning, do you believe that you can learn something new with effort and work? Collaboration, do you believe that working as a team is best for everyone's success? Failure, do you believe that failure is good and an essential part of growth? Effort, do you believe that it is beneficial when a task is very hard? And risk. Do you believe that trying something new leads to innovation and improvement? Leadership, and again, I don't think this just applies to manage, management, but all of us. Do you believe that as a leader, it's best to encourage growth or put others in leadership roles? 
Okay, and here are the resources that I use. So um, the mindset book, the article about Microsoft, and then also I checked an article that was um, kind of elementary, but just about collaborative mindset in uh, business. And then these slides were made by Slides Carnival. I'm not this artistic, so I had someone do that for me. Okay, so think, I, I really want to open up a Q&A because I want to hear from you guys, like what your experiences have been with this. I'm very curious about that. Um, and again, here is my contact information, um, my Twitter and Instagram handle for my business. If you want my personal one, just come and talk to me after the talk. I'll hang around. Also, anytime during the conference, if you want to come talk to me about anything or during my office hours, please do. I love to hear from people just to chat about whatever, like what you're going through, um, just your thoughts, or if you think my talk was totally awful, please come tell me. So um, I love that. So yeah, let's just go ahead and get started with the Q&A. I'm going to have a couple of helpers with mics kind of running around. And then if you would like to ask a question or even make a comment, um, just raise your hand. Um, okay, that's it. So questions, anyone? Put your hand up, we'll run the microphone to you. Hi, uh, I wanted to ask, like, how do you approach working with people that might have like very fixed and arrogant personality? <laughs> yes. yes, oh my goodness, that is so difficult. Um, the first thing for me is just always to have empathy for that person, you know? Um, sometimes when someone really, um, like when I'm having a conflict in the workplace and, or I don't like someone, it's because of something like in me that I'm seeing in them. So that helps me have some empathy. And then um, I think, I mean, I don't really have the answer to this, right? The only thing I know is I don't know, right? But um, I guess in the future with, or in the past, what's worked for me is um, just trying to explain the benefits. Like, hey, if we do this, then this is what I think is going to happen. Or maybe say, like my, in my past experience, when I did this, like actually this happened and try to present like the benefits because I found that that's really what people want is the bottom line, right? Like what am I going to get out of this? Not like we should do this this way because I know the best way. Like that has never really worked for me. But like I said, I'm still learning. So in the future, I'm hoping like to continually work on these different types of mindsets. And um, yeah, I just, I just remember that also like Carol Dweck says, like these things start when we're children and we can have a mix of the different types of mindsets. So it's totally okay to like be in fixed mindset one day and then not the next day. Um, but yeah, I'm sure that did not answer your question, but thank you for asking that. Um, in your experience, what are some good ways to share information with your team and be more collaborative with them? Oh, sure. Um, well, a lot of teams do have meetings. Um, my favorite meeting is a retrospective, and a lot of companies don't do that anymore. But um, definitely in that one, I, I like to give people kudos on things, like first focus on the positive, and then say, this is the things that I could do better. Um, yeah, just setting up little chats too. It really depends on your team's structure, I guess. Like when I've worked on really small teams, it was me and one other QE. I'd be like, do you want to grab a room and just like chat about this? Like, um, and then uh, like kind of talk, talk it out. Like how do we want to split up the work or do we want to refactor this now, refactor it later, um, that kind of thing. Um, I guess like training people can be a little bit different, I, I don't know, there's lots of different ways to do that, like in one-on-ones, of course, or being available for questions, like, um, like I say, please come ask me a question. I'm sitting here waiting anxiously for you to please ask me a question about this. Um, that kind of thing, just being approachable, I guess. Like, um, I don't know, I found that some jobs, like people will be like with their headphones on, like, mm -hmm. and I'm like, I don't want to ask a question because what if I scare them when I tap on their shoulder? Like, I need to be like, hey, it's totally cool. Just if you have a question, come and talk to me. Um, 
And then, yeah, some, some jobs I've had had given me the opportunity to do like talks like this, but like at work during like an all hands or something. And I sign up to do those. And I sign up for the hackathons. Like I did one where I wrote code in Kotlin a while ago for the Android team. I, I really believed in it and promoted it. So um, if you have those kinds of opportunities, I definitely recommend them too. <laughs> Um, so, have you had experience working with people who they themselves are in a fixed mindset and you're trying to get them out of it in a collaborative way, but they're just not really leaping at that? They're much more like, I just want to, you know, get the X number of tests done and leave and I don't want to fix anything in the code review suggestions. I just want to get out of here and say my job is done. How to try to, I don't know, inspire them in some way or get them mm -hmm. to kind of see this? Maybe share your presentation, I don't know. But mm -hmm. any suggestions on that front? I mean, that's really difficult because um, we can't really change how other people are. And I have to tell myself a lot, like, okay, how that person is is really none of my business, right? But um, I can always like provide positive examples about like my experiences to that person. So that's how I try to talk. Like when I, I do things like this, I never say like, you should do Blah, blah, blah. I always go, in my experience, when I've done this, it's turned out really well. Or in my experience, when I've done this, it really didn't turn out well. Um, unfortunately, there's going to be some people that we just can't change. So um, there's kind of like a practice of acceptance that has to happen there, too. Um, and also, like, if it's really a team dynamics thing, depending on your manager, that might be something that you would want to bring up. Like, not, not, I would never name a specific person when bringing that up, but I'd be like, hey, I have this idea, and it's based off of something I read or a technical talk I saw. I was thinking, can we try to incorporate that into our process? Um, and I think I've always had managers be pretty receptive to it unless, you know, it's like crunch time and we really, we really can't. So um, I guess like in summary, like it is important to remember like there are just some people that we cannot change, but um, we, I think we can always use our experiences and knowledge and things that we've learned to benefit others just by sharing in that way. So how do you really measure the, uh, the growth mindset? Or what do you think, how do you really like, see that team has kind of went through a stage from maybe a fix to a growth mindset? Okay, so I'm hearing we're impaired, so I'm going to have to say it. I couldn't quite hear. Um, you... What I'm saying is how do you measure the progress of growth mindset, whether it's with yourself individually or with the team that you're working with? Oh, so like, how do you measure if the team was working in a growth mindset way? Um, well, uh, I think growth mindset is kind of something that happens in here for us. Um, but if you're thinking about collaborative mindset, uh, I mean, we all have to go over metrics and stuff like that. Like, what do we deliver and how is it working? And we can definitely go and do like analyses of our code and um, things like that and kind of see like, oh, this is not working. And like, hey, did we try any like innovative solutions to things? Did we try any high risk projects this year? Did we do any side projects? Did you guys participate in the hackathon? Like, um, I know the hackathons aren't accessible to every single person, but it's just one um, idea. Um, and then just kind of think about that, like, oh, we didn't do any of that stuff, and I haven't updated the framework at all, and, and, but not in a negative way. I want to emphasize that. Like, um, like, I'm in fixed mindset a lot, and it's definitely not helpful to be judgment, judgmental of myself for that. It's just like trying to think, taking note of it, like, oh, that's fixed mindset right there. And then trying to be like, how can I move toward this side, the growth mindset? Um, so yeah. So if you're in a rather risk averse culture, what's a good way to introduce risk in a way that doesn't scare people off? Um, so I found that like, uh, 
testing in the test automation framework, if it's in like the test environment, it actually can be a good way to um, introduce some new concepts and ideas. So that's how I introduced Kotlin at the company I was working for. I asked if I could just do it for the tests and that actually worked. Um, if you have work at a company that has 10% or 20% projects, that's definitely another way to try it. Um, yeah, uh, I know. I totally understand. I've worked at a lot of places where it's extremely hard to change the production code. Um, I think um, one time when I got to do something a little innovative was we introduced a brand new feature, and I said, "Can I structure it this way?" But it was like still using the same language and stuff like that, um, and that worked out fine. Um, so yeah, those are just a few options. Unfortunately, some workplaces are going to be really rigid, but um, but yeah, those are just some ideas I have. You said you built a service and your uh, automation engineer. Just kind of curious how you ramped up on that project. Um, if you paired with other uh, web developers, because uh, it seems like quite a stretch. Uh, yeah, it was just a mock service. It was a little bit easier. I didn't have to build like a full service, and I actually just used like static JSON files. Um, for the response, um, and I did get some help from the web developers. Just on the when I had to do a, a, like put and stuff like that was a little bit more complicated than just like get um, one. So I did get some help on that. But um, yeah, I just um, went online and looked into it and tried some things, and they didn't work. And I asked for help, and then eventually um, everything worked out really well. So, um, but yeah, it was just a mock service, so I didn't have to worry about testing the back end. I could just do the front end. Um, stuff and I just put it in the project and we had like a way of pointing it to the test service um, it, during some build config so it worked out. We had time for one more question. You had a question over here, sir? Uh, so when you're hiring, how do you identify people with growth and collaborative mindset and you only hire people that have growth and collaborative mindset? that you have identified. Yeah, well that's complicated because a lot of us are mixed, right? So, um, I don't know, when I've interviewed people, um, I'm always really impressed by someone who says, I just want to learn and I'm ready for the next step in my career and I think this will be challenging. So I'm always like, yeah, rock on, like that's really cool, you know? Like, so, like some people are just like, I know this stuff, which, which is great, like if you're an expert in something and you have a lot of intelligence, that's also really good. But like the Microsoft article I read was they were trying to look at talent potential in, addi in addition. So it's like, is this person gonna be willing to do some extremely hard tasks? So I do that sometimes in interviews, I go, sometimes, you know, we have really bad days and like this is the scenario. Are you cool with that? How would you deal with that? You know, so um, that's kind of like one of the ways. But yeah, usually like um, people will come right out and say like, yeah, I want to learn or I don't want to be stuck doing the same thing or I was too comfortable at my old job and I'm ready to move on. I actually saw the VP at Twitter speak and that's exactly what she said. She said, as soon as I get comfortable in a job, I know it's time to move on. So I thought that was definitely a growth mindset way of thinking about things. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you, Meredith. Thank you. Um,